Hello, it's my privilege to share with you briefly on this Good Friday, a day that is so profoundly holy and special for us as Christians, a day that we will all be accustomed to uh, spending differently to how we have to spend it this year. Uh, but it's good to be able to share together in moments like this and to reflect together prayerfully on all that this day means. In Mark's Gospel in chapter 15 and verse 39, we read these words. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. How amazing this verse is if we can stop and truly hear it as if for the first time. A centurion sees how a man dies and says, Surely this man was the Son of God. I wonder, what was the sign? What gave it away? What enabled the centurion to be so sure? One of the things that marks out Christianity is that we affirm that God in Jesus died. And for some, that's a real challenge. What good is a God who dies, they say? To which perhaps our response simply has to be, what good is a God who doesn't love us so deeply that he's willing to die for us? We have a good God. And on this day, Good Friday, God Friday, we celebrate his pure and holy goodness. Willing to love us to the very end. And we celebrate with awe Jesus showing the whole comprehensive just see how much I love you, love, which is willing to die for us. How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. One of the most famous verses in the Bible in John's Gospel says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him shall not be lost but may have eternal life. And then Jesus continues just as significantly. You must understand that God has not sent his Son into the world to pass sentence upon it, but to save it through him. Yes, Jesus came to save us from each other, from ourselves, and from so often feeling condemned. He came to save us to bring us home, to make us safe. And that mission was so important that he was willing to die in order to prove it, in order to make it finally, dazzlingly, painfully real. And so, on a cross, in front of jeers and taunts, Jesus breathes his last. And a centurion saw how he died and said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Why? Well, how about because he knew that Jesus on a human level didn't need to die. He could have said the right words that would have got him off. He could have journeyed a different path. But no, God in Christ loved the world so much that he, the Son of God, was willing to die for us had to die for us, dying full of unconditional love, a love that would have held him to the cross without the need for nails. Perfect love. Amazing grace. And it was this love, his love made plain for all to see in his final breath, which made the centurion sure. May we now today, even and especially in these challenging stay-at-home days, be sure, too, of that love for us, which is in the heart of God and displayed so profoundly this day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your love. Thank you for your dying love. Thank you for your saving love. 
Thank you that in you we find ourselves, we find God, we find life. Thank you that in your death you ultimately revealed who you were. May we in love respond with glad and full hearts. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Amen. cross, a symbol of despair and death, Jesus' cross, a symbol of hope and life beyond death. 
And so we proclaim neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. And may God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.